Okay, now that we have the axial force diagram drawn and we have our internal forces laid out, uh, we're ready to go ahead and calculate our displacements. To calculate our displacements between uh, or at D, we need to calculate our displacements from the support at A. Uh, so if we write that down, we know that our displacements at D would be equal to the displacements between A and D because the position A is fixed, and that would be equal to the sum of the various displacements of the sections between A and D. And we could break that down more specifically and say the displacements between A and B plus the displacement between B and C plus the displacement between C and D. Now, we just recall our fundamental design equation for axial displacements where that is equal to P at I, L at I, E at I, A at I, where I'm just using the subscript I to denote uh, individual sections. So we go down here, I'll be very explicit, and we'll fill in for each section. So we'll talk about between A and B to start with. So we have P, L, E, A, B, A, A, B, and between B and C, and finally between C and D, and then we can go ahead and fill in our variables. Of course the internal forces are being taken off of the axial force diagram because we will need to make sure we have the internal forces, not the loads applied. So between A and B from our axial force diagram, we see that that is um, 5,000 newtons. I, I'm just going to choose to work in newtons and millimeters because they deliver an answer in megapascals, which is very convenient for us, uh, multiplied by a length of 400 millimeters, all divided by, now I know E's and A's are the same throughout here, but I'm going to want to calculate these individual displacements so I can graph them after. So I'm going to go ahead and fill them in individually. 200,000 megapascals for steel. And we calculated the area at 490.9 millimeters squared. And we add to that. Now I'm going to put in the load between B and C and we got to remember to include the negative sign because it's in compression so we'll put negative 3,000 newtons a length of 300 millimeters over which it's applied and our E and A at the bottom and 490.9 millimeters squared and then finally our displacement which occurs between C and D again include the negative sign 7000 newtons 200 millimeters all divided by 200,000 megapascals and 490.9 millimeters squared and I've already done this calculation, so I'll go out and I'll write them down in the three sections because that'll help us with our graphing later. We have 0 0.0204 millimeters minus 0 0.0092 millimeters minus 0 0.01426 millimeters for a total displacement between A and D of 0 0.00306 millimeters. So now we want to transfer uh, this information uh, that we've calculated the displacements onto our displacement graph. So our, we'll start at A and I'm just going to mark the position at A in here. We know that it's at 0 uh, millimeters because it's fixed and the displacement between A and B is 0 0.0204 so I'll put that up here and then it goes down 0 0.0092 so this isn't quite to scale but it's probably somewhere around here 
and then it drops a further 0 0.01426 and that would put it right about here finishing at 0 0.00306 and then I'll just connect the, the dots here on our graph because it will vary linearly between those points as the length increases and we end up with a displacement graph from A to D. And that concludes uh, this particular question.